Hello and welcome to the Gradcracker webinar featuring Reply. Reply is a global technology consultancy company specializing in digitalization, integration, cloud and future technology implementations. Today we'll meet four graduates at Reply and also Aaron, who is part of Reply's talent acquisition team. Aaron, tell us a little bit more about your role at Reply and Reply in general. And thanks for that, Carla. So, Carla, I'm one of the talent acquisition consultants here at um, at Reply, and um, yeah, effectively, uh, we do the initial screening for a lot of our graduates uh, that join the uh, the Reply group, for which have joined me here today. Um, Reply as a business um, actually specializes across a wide range of industries, including retail, telecommunications, manufacturing, logistics, and non for profit and government. We work with leading edge technologies uh, such as Internet of Things. Um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, 5G and future networks, cloud technologies, and block blockchain, just to name a few. We have actually strategic partners with um, a wide range of leading software, uh, the software companies such as Microsoft, Oracle, Amazon, and Google. And last but not least, we also try and foster a fun and social work environment through initiatives like hackathons, webinars, and boot camps. I am joined here today with graduates from four of our companies, Vishoy from Glue, Zoe from Data, Ashley from Retail, and Stefan from Net, who will give you a bit of insight as to what life at Reply is like and their graduate experience. Thank you very much, Aaron. So now what we're going to do is meet the graduates um, in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to start with you, Zoe. Um, so if you could just tell us about where you went to university, and um, what did you study, and what's your role at Reply, please? So I am Zoe and I'm part of Data Reply. Um, I'm a consultant, but I consult as a data scientist. Um, I graduated from Bristol University and studied engineering and mathematics. And just tell us a little bit more about Data Reply, please. So what, what is what is actually our role and what is Data Reply? So um, as the name suggests, Data Reply, we work with a lot of data, um, anything we have data scientists data engineers data analysts um, anything to do with like kind of um, data processing and things like that um, so there's a lot of machine learning but there's a lot of data sets and there's um, a variety of different methods that we can use and a variety of different companies and applications as all companies have to use data in this day and age um, so it's a pretty widespread across multiple um, different industries, uh, but kind of all tied together through the theme of data. Perfect. Thank you very much, Zoe. So on to you, Stefan. So similar question. Um, where did you go to university? What did you study? And what's your role at NetReply? Yes, yeah, so my name is Stefan and I work as a solutions architect at NetReply in the UK. Uh, I graduated in electronic engineering from uh, King's College London uh, in the summer of 2020. And uh, I decided not to do a master's during the pandemic, instead choosing to start working. Uh, and I actually joined Reply uh, shortly after. Perfect, thank you. And um, tell us a little bit more about NetReply. So what do you specialize in? So we as a company work mostly with, as the name suggests, uh, networks, both traditional aspects, that is to say legacy networks, the ones that would have been found in data centers, for example, for the past 20, 30 years. Uh, as well as future networks, which has to do more so with uh, new paradigm shifts overall in the way that networks are designed, both traditional in terms of actual um, data center architectures, as well as in telecommunications. Thanks, Stefan. And Bishoy, on to you. So could you tell us about where you went to university and what did you study and all about Glue Reply? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Bishoy. I studied computer science at Middlesex University. Graduated in the 2020. I'm an integration consultant at Glue Reply. And at Glue, we are specialists in integrations, data, strategy, and architecture. And uh, from the company's name, Glue Reply, because that's what we actually do, we glue uh, organizations and applications together, whether it was in the cloud or legacy systems running on the premise. We connect them together to help the organizations succeed. Uh, discover new opportunities and maximize the value of its digital assets. I love the name Glue Reply. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> on, to, on to you, Ashley. So similar question. Um, where you went to university, what did you study and your role at Retail Reply? Hi everybody, my name is Ashley. So 
I went to Queen Mary University of London and I studied an MEng in computer systems engineering. I joined Retail Reply just over six months ago and my role there is as a technology consultant. Perfect. And tell us a little bit more about Retail Reply. Yeah, so again, as the name suggests, we specialize in retail clients. So one of our, a lot of our specialties include working with point of sale implementation, mobile customer service, digital product delivery, and that's just to name a few again, but we essentially support clients with digital transformations, whether that be um, agile coaching, it could be project management, a variety of things. Perfect, thank you very much. Now let's go and meet the graduates a little bit in a little bit more detail and what made them choose to work for Reply. So Zoe, I'm going to head back to you, please. So why did you choose um, to join Reply? So at university, I kind of discovered that data was a passion of mine, just um, kind of different data sets representing um, different things across uh, different industries um, and I was looking at different types of jobs and found data reply um, I just really enjoy kind of preparing and cleaning but also the potential of data and kind of there's been like a big theme recently of like trends in big data and things like that so I thought it was a very like attractive kind of um, role to get into a business to get into um, and then kind of it was just obvious that data reply was going to be about um, data. So um, then I applied and um, just spoke about what my strengths and weaknesses are um, with the company. Um, found that like I had a passion and aptitude for data, but also found that there, I did have some shortcomings in terms of like um, like I could have been I could be a better coder, things like that. So um, the Data Reply saw that as a very good training opportunity for me, um, kind of training me up in cloud systems such as AWS, training me up in Python and different um, methods of machine learning algorithms, but also data handling um, and things like that. So that's kind of what really attracted me is the fact that it was a really big training opportunity for me, especially like as a grad. Um, but then the other side is Reply as a whole, like the culture of it. Um, it's a big company, uh, but with smaller subsets. So there's a lot of people to talk to. There's a lot of people to get to know. There's a lot of people to collaborate with. Um, for example, uh, when I did my induction, I met a lot of other graduates. Um, this was during the pandemic though. So we kind of just made a group chat and we um, discovered that we all liked just like playing silly games like Among Us because it was the pandemic, nothing, nothing else to do. So we kind of just played that, got to know each other, got to know each other's companies, which I think is really important um, and kind of knew who Reply was as, as a whole. Um, so it was just really interesting to um, get to know the actual company and other graduates who are in the same position. Is, is there a lot of interaction then between the different businesses? So for example, like Data Reply, do you have a lot of interaction with Glue and Annette in retail? So um, it kind of just depends on um, like what kind of environment you're in. For example, if you join something called a community of practice, um, that's across, which is like a project, an innovation project across um, every single company. Sometimes you can actually approach clients together. If, for example, data and retail, if we want to approach a retail company, um, we can approach that together. Um, and then in terms of socials and things like that, um, we all attend the kind of the same ones, um, company-wide, we're all in the same office and things like that. Thank you very much for that insight, Zoe. So on to you, Stefan. And um, why did you choose to join Reply? Well, when I graduated, um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I was more so looking for a place to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, in my case in particular, I always had a kind of, uh, uh, I took a liking towards uh, electronic engineering, telecommunications, hardware overall, but I was also aware that there was currently a paradigm shift towards um, a softwareization of networks. So I was looking uh, specifically for companies which were at the forefront of that movement. And then at the same time, I was aware that uh, in industry, most things, you would think that, that they are largely, or even mostly 
affected by the actual technology itself. However, very often um, the actual barriers, I suppose, have to do more so with human interactions and organizations. So I wanted to really uh, get to know what it's like to also manage the human side of projects and of the overall industry. So in that sense, I wanted to be a consultant in the field. Uh, and so I found an opportunity at Reply. Um, I interviewed with uh, NetReply and specifically the future networks uh, business unit within NetReply. And I was interviewed directly by the people who I work with every single day today. Oh, really? <laughs> so it was a very, very positive experience. I got to know immediately how much of a tight knit community they are. Even during the interview, we were, they themselves were joking out amongst each other, obviously not about me, but about other things. And so, <laughs> and so it was, it was a very positive experience. Um, and then also that they had a good uh, portfolio of projects that they had been working on, some actually extremely important for European wide uh, uh, 5G networks. Um, and so it was really clear cut for me uh, from, for, from that uh, second onwards. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about the future networks then. What, what does that actually mean and what could potential graduates be involved in in that team? Well, so the idea of future networks is, that, as, I, as I said before, um, there are certain evolutions in networks which are changing the way that um, they are being installed or simply architected, the way that they are actually being utilized um, by the end clients, that's that being us, or maybe in, in, in uh, some cases in industry uh, by robots and such. Uh, and, uh, and there are certain, I would say now, differences between how you would have done it before and how you would do it now. Now it's a lot more cloud-based, a lot more software-based. And so what my business unit, Future Networks, does primarily is, number one, understanding what are the current, not only trends, but standards in the industry. Uh, and then making sure that we are adhering to those standards while at the same time being able to architect networks which are tailored towards a specific use case. That's one of the strengths of 5G nowadays as opposed to 4G, just the degree to which you can uh, tailor the configuration and the architecture of the network to serve a specific use case. Okay, thank you very much for that insight, Stefan. And um, Bishoy, on to you, sir. Why did you choose Reply? Tell us a little bit more about your experiences. Yeah, sure. Uh, so after graduate, I didn't have much uh, experience or actually I didn't know anything about integrations. But when I came across uh, Glue and I spoke with the uh, recruitment team and they told me how uh, great is the environment to learn a new skills and uh, just work as a consultant and develop different types of skills. So I decided to uh, step in actually. And I was so excited within my first two weeks, I was able to receive a uh, well, I called it as a great training and support from the managers, the other consultants and new joiners that helped me understand the uh, integration concepts, what technologies we use and uh, how do we actually perform. Uh, I also really like that uh, I'm not only developing using a uh, say set of uh, steps, no, I'm actually contributing to the solution, contributing to how we could solve the problem we're working on, what would be the best ways that we could solve that. Uh, also within Glow, you could uh, progress and gain lots of responsibilities. Uh, currently, I'm the owning of some of the projects that I'm working on. Uh, so it's not like you, uh, you're you only working as a developer. No, you could be the owner and just go speak to your client, uh, discuss the opportunities. What can you do for him? How can you help him? Also, there is the lots of support that comes from the managers when you need. And uh, finally, one thing that is uh, great about Reply and Clue, it's the uh, career progress. I joined as a graduate. Within a year now, I'm just one step away from being a senior consultant. Uh, wow. Achieving that to this short period uh, just shows how much effort and support the company puts to invest in you. Uh, it shows how everyone just helps you to succeed. So you mentioned there about how you can, you know, you can manage your own project, go speak to clients and everything else. So how do you and your managers and Glue Reply set your objectives? How does all that work? So uh, it could seem a bit complex when you're a graduate and just switching suddenly to the uh, uh, in, uh, well, industry, but uh, it is achievable. You just need to recall the good uh, time management skills, plan your time, get the best out of it. Uh, when it comes to setting the objectives, I was surprised that uh, you actually got to speak with your line manager and you choose your objectives. 
What do you want to do? Uh, is this something that is good for you? Uh, they actually give you a balance. So if you choose to do a two minute complex, they will try to speak to you and just tell you that try to balance it up, you know, or you can just go for all, uh, sorry, or just go for all as a complex and they will always support you. Uh, during the whole year, I used to have lots of uh, meetings with my line manager to see how am I progressing. They used to ask me if the load or the workload is too much for me, if I need any help, if I'm not managing to balance between the work, the life and my objectives. And uh, it ended up really good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, Ashley, last but not least, tell us about your, your journey so far and why did you choose Reply? So my background is quite technical. Um, although I like technical, I did not want to pursue technical as a big career. So and I've always liked consulting. I like talking to new people. I like helping people fix problems. And that in a nutshell is what consulting is, right? And so um, retail specifically, why I chose retail is because the consult the clients that we work with you often see the work that you do for these clients come into fruition you can see it you know when you go out to a store or when you're shopping a brand you can see the steps that you've done you, you know the behind the scenes and it it gives you a sense of satisfaction that you might not see if you're say working for a bank or I mean no shade to anyone who works for a bank but personally that's what I liked about retail once I joined retail there was very much a sense of um it was it was work hard play hard it was a combination of both so I think an example would be in my first week at reply I came to the offices um and I didn't really know much anyone there so I just took it upon myself to walk around the office I sat down at one of the desks of the other companies and I just said I'm gonna make friends with you um if you have a problem with that I can go but we we talked for a while and we became quite good close friends um and then in another situation, it was a Friday evening and um, everyone was kind of winding down for the weekend. Um, we were kind of done for our work and um, Retail Reply has a golf set um, near our desk. So I just took a golf set and we played mini golf in the office with a couple of the other grads. So what I wanted to point out was the kind of environment that Re Reply has. So, yes, you work, you learn different things. There's all of that, but there's also a sense of it's not all serious. We, we play we have fun, we bond with our teammates, etc. Oh, I want to work with you, Ashley. It sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like a blast there. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks very much. Um, so we're going to spin around now and go back to Zoe and talk about your projects. Um, so what projects have you been involved in, Zoe, since you joined Reply, and what would you say your favourite one was? Well, um, I've been involved in um, the main project I've been involved in with my, with my main client, um, was a big fashion retailer so I've actually been doing that for like over a year now kind of almost um, since I started um, so it's a forecasting project for um, this uh, fashion retailer forecasting all of their um, products for Europe so they're a really big company so I kind of see their logo everywhere so it's kind of interesting to see what the trends are what's selling what's not um, and things like that so yeah we use like machine learning to predict uh, what they're going to sell where they're going to sell it and what month and things like that um, and it's really interesting because I it develops my coding skills kind of every day and but it's also interesting to kind of know about fashion seasons how they um forecast how they plan um the season ahead so it's really interesting to kind of get almost like insider knowledge into this brand that you know so much about just by seeing it but then you can actually see like behind the scenes so that's pretty cool um and because i've been kind of on that project for a while i can kind of see uh get to know like business processes um such as like agile methodology and like how uh, they assign tasks like they assign tickets and how meetings kind of huge meetings kind of work which um usually I, I don't really I've never really had to do I just kind of do the task that's in front of me um so it's really nice to see kind of how businesses huge businesses work um and kind of get to know like a task really really well like a project really well and, and what's the part of you being given during these projects and from from you know senior managers and, and also your team as well? 
Um, when I first started, there was like a big um, kind of handover from the, the previous person who was also at Data Reply, um, who's just going on to a new project. So there was a, good, a really good handover from that point, but also there's a few other people at this client who are all also part of Data Reply. So any questions that I had after that person left, I could still go to these other people, um, whether like it was a silly question or not, because they would, I would feel bad asking like a really silly question, but it was just kind of a comfortable space to ask anything. Um, so there was a lot of support from like, not only like my colleagues, but like um, kind of like the senior consultants, like not only consultants on my level, but the senior consultants as well, um, who were just like willing to share their knowledge about things and kind of like um, make you as, as successful as, they, as they've been with the client um, and just kind of show off basically and how like good we are as consultants. Yeah, well, you've all got the same end game, haven't you? you know, you've all got the same um, ambition to succeed. So perfect. Thank you very exactly, much, Sophie. Yeah. Um, Stefan, I'm going to go on to you. So favourite project that you've worked on so far? Yeah, I just want to build upon what Bishoy said before as well, which is to do with um, the fact that you really you can take up as much responsibility as you wish, and you you will be supported by your by your peers, by your seniors, um, with the common understanding, uh, at least from my experience, that my growth is their growth, and vice versa. That there really is a common game to be played. That it's not a zero sum game internally. Um, so that's really an environment that is very conducive to growth. I think in terms of my most interesting projects, I've had a chance in the last year and a half to see a handful of them through from beginning to end. But probably the most interesting one has to do with the adaptation of what is typically a, a terrestrial, let's say, version of a 5G network, the one that we see on the ground, the, uh, the adaptation of it to function in satellite networks, um, which is to say there are uh, many differences in terms of the actual physics, let's say, of, of propagation of the actual waves, um, which needs to be which need to be taken into account um, when you're attempting to latch onto a satellite as opposed to a ground-based uh, station, and that is with the purposes of actually enabling new use cases, typically in industry, not so much maybe um, for people, but more so for robots, for smart vehicles, for for uh, sensory data, um, where you would be able to offer coverage in very remote locations, things like oil pipelines, uh, oil refineries, um, livestock, let's say, uh, management in, let's say, Australia, for example, where the actual regions and ranches are as the sizes of actual countries in Europe. Yeah. Um, so you have an opportunity really to, um, to dig deep into the core, let's say, behind the technology you have to have, and you build over time, obviously, you're not born with it, you build over time the kind of the intuitive understanding of what goes into um, creating these specifications, in my case, for 5G networks. And then you're working very closely with people who have many years of experience and actually deploying satellites into, into space, which is no doubt very, very cool and interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then and then aside from that project, but in the same vein, we also want to tender with the European Space Agency not too long ago to do a similar project or with a similar goal rather. Um, so uh, there are as many opportunities um, to, to create business and to actually grow as you yourself are willing to actually pursue. Um, and, and that uh, does, if, if done properly, which it hopefully is, it does amount to a lot of success. Wow, I'm not sure you can top that, Bisho, but do you tell us about your projects that you've been working on? So I'll uh, talk about one of my first projects, which was for the Church of England. Yes, yes. So uh, the project was to build a master data hub, which will act as a centralized uh, place for all the systems that are used within the church, could send a data to it, receive new data and receive updates. Um, it was nice in this project, we had to start from the scratch where it's designing a common models that is used across all the other systems, which means you actually go and speak to each system individually, uh, find which data they need, put it in a common model that can be used as a uh, in the hub. And then you have to go and build the actual integration process as well to start bringing data into the master data hub that you built and do the other side where you're uh, actually sending the updates. All of this was really nice because as a graduate, I could actually see the solution from the start to the beginning, 
could see how different components are connected together to deliver a solution, which is something I didn't used to see uh, at uni. And then seeing actually uh, how the whole solution helps the church to develop their data and to have their systems connected together. Even hearing that the church are uh, showcasing the work we did to other organizations so that we could follow it up. Uh, it was just a great feeling. Uh, made you feel like you're actually contributing to the community and to a charitable organization. That's what I was going to ask you for your, for your next question, actually. So what, what challenges did you face working for a, a non-for-profit organization as, a, as opposed to a, a corporate client? So, so uh, maybe one of the main differences is actually resources. So when you're working for a non-profit organization, you don't have much resources available for you due to the nature of the organizations. So the challenge is to come with a... Uh, out-of-the-box solutions to achieve the job you're looking to do without uh, asking for more resources. So you're only using what you have available for you. Uh, come up with a creative solution to help the organization. Perfect. Thank you very much for that insight. Um, Ashley, favorite project at Retail Reply, please. Yeah. So again, it was Around the time that I had joined Retail Reply, and it was one of the with the largest retailers in the UK, the project essentially was a digital contact strategy. So in layman's terms, it's essentially just investigating different ways that customers contact the retailer, how their um, how their process or their complaint or their question is processed into the client, um, basically how they interact, and we measured these things with different metrics and it's essentially to come up with a solution to provide more cost effectiveness within the client to save money or to um, make it more productive etc so as part of this project what I had to do was I had to go on different social media platforms like Instagram Facebook and I had to go onto the social support pages of the of this retail, retailer and I had to pretend to be an upset customer or someone with a question. And I had to um, basically see how they interacted with me. Um, and that was quite fun because I'm not an actress. I've never been an actress, but it was really nice to kind of put up a facade on and okay. be able to use whatever answers we got in our investigation. So that was quite fun for me. Yeah, definitely putting yourself in somebody. Everybody likes to make a complaint as well, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think that you um, learnt the, the most from um, as part of that project? Yeah, so there was two aspects within it. So one aspect is that internally how the team work together. So a lot of the things that I learnt were surrounding to do with leadership, teamwork, how the team collaborated, how there was a sense of you're not alone in whatever task you're set with. You have so many other people within your team that you can go to. Um, you learn so much more by just shadowing people, by asking questions. And again, like Zoe said, there is no stupid question. You can ask anything. And then on the other side, you have the side of how you can see a client operate, how their thought process is when they deal with customers, how um, the different metrics they use, how much it actually affects their business and how much it could actually cost them. The different things so those are some of the things I learned. Sounds like some fantastic <laughs> projects that are going on at retail and <laughs> retail reply. So now we're going to talk to the grads a little bit more about the graduate program and what really stood out for them um, on the individual graduate programs. So so we are going to start with you. So day to reply, what's has stood out the most for you? Um, for me as I kind of touched on before it was the development opportunities the certifications, the push to really improve on like your chosen skills. So I've done uh, two data IQ certifications. I've done an AWS certification and I'm uh, doing another one now. Um, I did some SQL things, but also I just um, really jumped in at the deep end and developed my Python coding like to a pretty high level as well. Um, I got to know some best practices and got to collaborate with a bunch of people. So there's also, um, as I mentioned before, a lot of cross co collaboration between like the companies and things like that. A lot of um, small projects you can work on some like um, there's a big theme of innovation, um, just 
uh, to kind of not only improve our skills, but to show clients that we kind of care about a particular topic and, and we're competent in it. Um, so I just thought it was really interesting the um, constantly improving, constantly trying to train up to kind of be the best you can be and, and work, work your best. Perfect. Thank you, Zoe. Stefan, on to you. What stands out to you about the um, Reply Graduate Programme? Well, you know, as as uh, all of the reply companies are kind of their own small little ecosystem, so do the graduate programs vary a little bit. Uh, in my case, I was I was uh, asked to partake um, after let's say about half a year, especially um, in these webinars, which um, are basically done internally to reply. So you have an opportunity to record a one to one and a half hour uh, session, uh, which is then uploaded on a on a topic that you're quite uh, knowledgeable about and then that is uh, that is uploaded onto our internal platform where uh, anybody from the re reply network can uh, can learn straight from you and you can also watch their webinars um, so that you can get to know what they are doing in their reply company and, and of course there are also incentives to do so internally um, from various opportunities such as uh, attending conferences afterwards um, and in my case I had a chance to record three webinars and I, I, I also hosted one lab camp uh, which were which were all basically attended by many many dozens of people and um, and then that was a very very good mark on my end of let's say graduate program uh, review. Famous and Stefan really aren't you? <laughs> celebrity, oh, yeah. we've got a celebrity on the webinar. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Um, Bishai, on to you, sir. Um, stand out part of the graduate program. Yeah, sure. I'll add into the top of what the other repliers said. Uh, for me, it was the certifications. So, uh, mm. for actually being assigned to a project, you do need to get trained on the platform you're using. So, I got trained on Del Boomi, which one of the platforms I work with. Uh, I got my certifications. And also during the training, you have actually a great opportunity to participate in some of the projects. So you could link what you are learning and link some of the concepts that you are learning and practice it, see how this is being used in, in the projects, what are the best practices. So you're not working or so you're not learning in isolation. So you're actually doing a training and you could practice it in the same time. Perfect. I like the way that it's not in isolation as well. You know, there's this, obviously there's individual training and then group training as well. Um, Ashley, what would you say would, you, would be your standout part of the, the programme? There's a bunch of things that I like about the graduate programme. I like that. I like a bunch <laughs> of things. <laughs> so uh, firstly, it's a sense of community that graduates can yeah. sense. So you're, again, like I said before, we're not alone. Um, even though you can step into a huge company like Reply, you have so much support and so much resources around you that you're you're always supported. You're never you are as Bishoy said, you can be owner of different projects, but there's never a sense of I can't ask anyone to help me. Another thing that I really like is how sorry my mind's gone blank. Um, <laughs> if you want to do different things as an environment for learning so for example I like both IT architecture and I like things to do with account management those are kind of two different routes right but the graduate program is so helpful in that it gives you opportunities to explore whatever you like and that also comes in hand with the certification so for example I've been given an opportunity to do an IBM certification that can help me to go more down the architecture route so yeah there's a bunch of things that reply graduate program is good for yeah i think what stands out for me is like, the training and development and the culture that's open to at reply i think it's everybody's just kind of echoed the same things as part of this webinar so thank you very much ashley and um, before i hand back to aaron we're just going to go through um, your experiences of the interview process because they are a little bit different so um zoe did to reply could you just go through the the interview process and the different steps please yeah, so um, when I applied, it was during the pandemic, so I had an online HR interview um, just to give me the general reply, like overview and things like that. Um, just talk about my CV a little bit, what I've done previously. Then I had um, an interview with the partner of Data Reply, um, who's like um, the over sees everything at data reply um just to get a little bit more about the company um but what i want to do what roles um would fit me um then i did another interview with um 
two people from data apply two senior consultants um kind of all of them were a bit like uh slightly informal like a lot of chats about what i want what they want but also like what um like what what i'm passionate about and just to make sure that like my passions align with that of data apply perfect thank you zoe and how does that change stefan for net reply what's different there yeah so my experience was largely similar i actually applied for a different reply company at the time uh, right. doing something similar but more so towards uh cloud um and and upon application i was i was also invited um by by hr to talk to other companies as well which nice. were interested in me in my case i also spoke to netreply right and yeah. uh, and so i spoke uh, primarily i spoke to i had, I had a technical interview with a couple of my uh, colleagues today and then after that I also spoke to my current uh, partner and what I particularly liked is that um, they so number one there is no jumping through hoops it's very direct it's very clear um, I, I I appreciated that they were also looking for a cultural fit even I, I'd say primarily for a cultural fit they had trust in you that you would be able to learn whatever you may not know in the given moment uh on the job uh, so to speak um and then and then also what i uh, liked is that uh, kind of the implied expectation that i should put on my best kind of consultant performance in terms of eloquence mm -hmm. basically to present myself the way i would to a client tomorrow um which is basically you, you your you, you, your best advertisement of your capability and of your knowledge just throwing in a little bit of a tip there as well, Stefan. So thank you very much for that one. Um, Bishoy, on to you, your experiences of the interview process, please. Uh, yes, sure. Um, I think as a graduate, I kind of uh, suffered from the same thing as most of the graduates, where your CV is kind of getting rejected via an automated process. But uh, the experience was really different at Reply. <clears throat> I accidentally applied for a uh, position that I wasn't qualified for. Then I was surprised that I got a call from uh, the HR team uh, explaining to me the position and telling me that I'm not qualified, but they could send me a technical assignment. Uh, if I could do that, uh, then they could put me to speak with the managers and to speak forward. And uh, for me, I said, yes, that's actually what I want. Uh, I want someone to give me the chance to build something, to see my skills. And it did happen with Reply. And then I had my uh, technical uh, interview with one of the seniors just enjoyed talking to him, see how he thinks, how he evaluates my solution. Uh, the way he gave me feedback, uh, it was just, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It's some, someone who's confident, he's only looking to uh, help you, give you the feedback. Uh, during the meeting with the managers, uh, to add and to confirm what Stefan said, I did feel that, yeah, I fit within the company. Uh, there's a culture fit to me. I said to myself, those are the type of managers that I want to work with. Uh, yeah. Funny situation, I did lose internet connection during the interview with the managers. Uh, I was really stressed about it, but when I got my internet back, they actually I found they're still waiting in the meeting for me. Oh, they didn't end the meeting. Uh, although my face looked distressed, but they uh, <laughs> actually started talking to me and laughing, so they didn't make me, just make me forget about this situation. Yeah. So yeah, it, it felt great. Oh, wow. Brilliant experience there. Thank you. And um, Ashley, tell us about your experiences. Yeah, so I kind of have a funny story too. I had applied um, to a bunch of jobs whilst I was in uni because I had like, a bit of a panic attack and I didn't know what I was going to do after I finished uni. And I had actually it had slipped my mind that I had applied to this reply job. So on an evening in of the week, um, one of the recruiters called me um, I wasn't quite sure at first who I was speaking to because again it had slipped in my mind um, but it was so nice like it was a very much informal chat it felt like I was talking to one of my old school teachers because they were just asking questions about me what I studied what I like to do etc and if I go into the actual process itself so once I had spoken to that recruiter and that's kind of like a screening test right Um, once that was done I had a technical assessment so I had to create a to be diagram and I had to make a presentation based of that and present to the partners um so that in, in itself was daunting but um because of the skills that I had picked up at uni I was able to do that so yeah 
I love the way it's always seems like a two-way process, isn't it? It's, it's obviously reply or interviewing you, but you're getting to know like the recruiters and, and your hiring managers as well, just to make sure you're happy with who you're going to go on and work for. Um, so Aaron, we have definitely enthused all the students who are going to watch this webinar. So tell us a little bit more about the roles that are available, please. Sure, Carl. Um, so basically, um, we've got so hopefully that um, that all provided you with um, some information and insight on our graduate program. Uh, thank you once again to all of the graduates that participated in this. Um, so if you're actually interested to be one of the our what we would call repliers or graduates, um, we have openings in a few in, in a wide range of technology of, of technologies and disciplines such as technology consultants, developers, data scientists, data engineers, machine learning, five G future networks cloud software engineer integration and also blockchain as well um, as, among, uh, as, as well as other things that some unfortunately I couldn't fit in this list so if you're interested in um, in applying for if anyone's interested in applying or being part of the uh, you know the fabulous reply group uh, hopefully you're all excited about this um, I would recommend that you know please visit our a um, our page on the grad crap cracker website uh, the uh, link is uh, in the screen above very much.